This is True News Headlines. I'm Doc Burkhardt. And I'm Kerry Kinsey. It's Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. And these are your uncensored news headlines. President Trump reacting to the news that nine Americans were apparently shot dead in an ambush by drug cartels in northern Mexico. The victims, all women and children, were from a prominent Mormon family. Zachary Goldman has more. Cell phone video shows the smoldering remains of a car where at least five members of a family, including two infants, may have been murdered in northern Mexico. Reuters has been unable to independently verify the footage. The attack on Monday by unknown gunmen is the latest case of grisly violence to hit the country. This is for the record. Nita and four of my grandchildren are burnt and shot up. Mexican media reported the victims belonged to the LeBaron family, members of a breakaway Mormon community that settled in Mexico in the 1920s. The victims reportedly include U.S. citizens. Family member Julian LeBaron described the incident as a massacre, adding that some members were burnt alive. The governments of Chihuahua and Sonora states issued a joint statement Monday saying they were investigating the incident. And Reuters said five, but actually the count is up to nine now that they know are dead. Three women were traveling in different vehicles with their children. Two were on their way to a wedding, and the third was headed to Phoenix, Arizona, when one of them suffered a flat tire. And the head of Mexico's security bureau says a local drug cartel may have mistaken the family's large SUVs for ones belonging to a rival gang and then opened fire. Well, President Trump is outraged by the news. He called the killers monsters and said the U.S. stands ready, willing and able to bring them to justice and will do the job quickly and effectively. He said you sometimes need an army to defeat an army and the U.S. is willing to help Mexico wage war on the drug cartels and wipe them off the face of the earth. Well, this comes amid reports that drug smugglers have been sawing through the new sections of the U.S. border wall. The Washington Post reports they're using cordless hand tools that cost as old well as $100 to cut through the steel and concrete bollards, and they're able to push the upper portion of the bollard out of the way, creating a gap big enough for an adult to easily crawl through, all in a matter of minutes. Well, Doc, it's a bombshell report from James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. This one showing ABC anchor Amy Robach talking for several minutes on a hot mic. She's claiming that a few years ago the network had a story on convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, but that ABC killed the piece. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will that we that also quashed the story. And then um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. She told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton. We had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail, and now it's all coming out, and it's like these new re revelations, and I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like, every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh, my God. We, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago saying, like, aunt, like, we, there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. And you already heard that here on True News. Well, in the video leaked by ABC News, insider working with Project Veritas, Ms. Robach says she has no idea who spiked the Epstein story. Now, following this release today, she issued a statement that makes entirely new claims. She now says the video depicts a private moment of frustration and the interview with the alleged Epstein victim, Virginia Roberts, was withheld because it didn't meet ABC News standards due to a lack of corroborating evidence. Now, ABC says the report was not withheld to protect anyone. We'll have more on the story in tonight's True News Godcast with Rick Walls. And by the way, for the latest in news and information from a Christian worldview, there's only one source. It's truenews.com that you can turn to. This is True News Headlines.
Praiser, Christian music streaming. Praiser's music streaming app provides listeners with 34 music channels of various genres of Christian music from around the world, anywhere, anytime, any device. Family-friendly Christian music. Praiser's hand-curated music channels include CCM, hymns, southern gospel, alternative, rock, hip-hop, gospel choirs, R&B, singer-songwriter, Caribbean, classic CCM, EDM, children's music, and much more. Praiser is free and funded by an enthusiastic community of listeners. Family-friendly music with no ads. Users can listen to Praiser on smartphones, tablets, desktops, Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV. Praiser offers the largest variety of Christian music on one platform. Download the app on your favorite platform or sign up on Praiser.com to start streaming today. Praiser, Christian music streaming. Any genre of Christian music that you can imagine, it's on there. I like Southern Gospel and Christian Country. You might have your own favorite, but download the Praiser app on your local device and start listening today. Welcome back to Trina's Headlines. Here's some more stories that we're looking at. Carrie? Well, Doc, Iran will start injecting uranium gas into over a thousand centrifuges at a fortified nuclear facility built inside a mountain. It's Tehran's latest step away from its atomic accord with world powers since President Trump withdrew from the deal over a year ago. Here's President Hassan Rouhani. The steps that we will take as of Wednesday will be at the Fordo nuclear facility. We have some 1,044 centrifuges at Fordo. Under the nuclear deal, these centrifuges can keep spinning, but gas cannot be injected to them. Now under the fourth step, we will begin injecting gas to Fordo centrifuges. We know that they are sensitive about Fordo and these centrifuges, but once they live up to their commitments, we will stop feeding gas to the centrifuges. Therefore, the fourth step, like the previous ones, is reversible. Well, Deb Kafala is reporting its sources in the U.S. and Israeli intelligence communities are gravely concerned, calling this the most substantial step Iran has taken since President Trump took the U.S. out of the deal. Now, they have assessed that with that facility functional now, Iran will have enough enriched uranium to have weapons-grade fuel in as little as, get this, two months. Wow. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is considering a change in election laws that would establish the direct election of the prime minister position. This says negotiations to form a coalition government have proven fruitless. Prospects are growing of a third election in less than a year. Well, the Knesset whip in Mr. Netanyahu's Likud party is pushing for a vote between the premier and his opponent, General Benny Gantz. And that's to break the deadlock. But a party spokesman says that the whip's goal is to build pressure to form a broad national unity government, not to pass a direct election law. Well, Doc, the U.S., Japan and Australia are debuting a program called Blue Dot Network. That's Blue Dot Network. Now, it'll screen Asian infrastructure projects in which Washington and its allies can invest. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross says the U.S. will trade more in Asia as it rolls out this American plan to support sustainable projects in the region. Looks like the way to counter China's multi-billion dollar Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative. Police in Moscow have detained a suspect who they say was plotting a terrorist attack in the Russian capital. Now, the man who is of Central Asian descent has not yet been identified. A court has ordered he be held until January 1st. Now, in the meantime, an investigation is now underway to identify possible accomplices. The lawyer representing former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn has demanded that the FBI be ordered to search their database for manipulated interview notes. Sidney Powell says the Bureau's system saves all draft copies of reports. She believes that'll provide information of use to the judge in the case. She also says the case against her client should be thrown out for egregious government misconduct. Yeah, Carrie, Ms. Powell has previously claimed the FBI made substantial edits to the notes of Mr. Flynn's interviews re regarding his interactions with Russians. Now, the Bureau's attorneys claim any changes were, quote, largely grammatical and stylistic, unquote. Ms. Powell says the edits were then made by then FBI attorney Lisa Page, 
who was having an affair with counterintelligence agent Peter Strzok, whose text messages indicate a desire to prevent President Trump from entering office. The Department of Justice is asking for information that could help identify the anonymous author behind a forthcoming book that's been billed as an unprecedented behind the scenes portrait of President Trump's time in office. Now, the book titled A Warning is scheduled to go on sale November 19th. A request by letter has been made to Hatchet Book Group. Right, a hatchet job by Hatchet Book Group. So. <laughs> Well, in that letter, the Department of Justice notes the author signed a non-disclosure agreement before joining the administration and may have had access to classified information. Now, he wants to know if the author of a warning is a current or former administration official. If Hatchet Book Group is unwilling to say, the DOJ wants copies of the non-disclosure agreement signed before the anonymous author joined the government. Well, Doc, Congressman Steve Cohen is mocking evangelicals who strongly support President Trump. Check out what he said recently about them. I just feel sorry for the people that are supporting Trump so much, the evangelicals that tell me. I get emails from people telling me God ordained that he be president. He is doing God's work, that he's accepted Jesus Christ and trying to follow his path. I think, wow, these people are deluded. He doesn't have any two Corinthians. He has no clue. I never, he can't quote his favorite Bible passage. He doesn't know the 23rd Psalm. He doesn't, he doesn't know the New Testament from the Old Testament. And, and yet they think that he's somehow ordained by God. Well, regardless of where one might stand on the president, few can argue that evangelicals won't be a powerful force in this 2020 re-election bid. And comments like Congressman Cohen's only serve to inflame their desire to see him return to the White House for four more years. Well, Monday we gave you a small sample of the new Kanye West who has been redeemed in the blood of our savior. Now actress Patricia Heaton is giving some advice to the music star about professing his Christian faith as a celebrity. She says uh, she's a devout Catholic who, of course, hasn't been afraid to discuss her faith or take on the social issues of the day from a biblical mindset in a recent interview, she said she would be praying for Kanye. Miss Heaton went on to say she thinks it's going to be difficult for Kanye going forward. She said when someone with his amount of stature in the entertainment industry makes a profession of faith, the rest of the world will scrutinize everything they say or do to catch them falling down. People, she added, will want to see him fail at being a Christian, and she hopes he's able to handle that. And someone else who can probably use Miss Heaton's advice is former NBA star Lamar Odom. The last week he posted on Instagram that he got saved at the Word Church in Warrensville Heights, Ohio. He said the senior pastor of the church, R.A. Vernon, was responsible for leading him to Christ. Now the athlete posted a photo of himself with his hands lifted up while the pastor laid hands on him. He wrote, nowadays I'm doing the best I can in walking with the Lord. He went on to praise Jesus for keeping him alive after he suffered a drug overdose at a Nevada brothel in 2015. There were a lot of stories back then, Kerry, of uh, Lamar getting in lots of trouble. And so, uh, so this is an incredible story. It is. And get this connection, Doc. Mr. Odom is Kanye's former brother-in-law by way of his marriage to Khloe Kardashian. She's the sister of Kim Kardashian West. Now, he's now dating personal trainer and life coach Sabrina Parr who's from the Cleveland, Ohio area. In her own Instagram post, she shared her support for his newfound Christian faith. Praise the Lord. Well, each day on truenews.com, we receive prayer requests from viewers and listeners just like you. And we love to hear from you and join together with you for God to answer your prayers. And we pray over each of those requests on a regular basis. I'd like to share one of those with you now. Well, dear Rick, the youth of Iraq are fighting against their government through protests. They're sick of government corruption and the country's wealth being stolen by politicians working for Iran. Many have been killed and injured due to Iran-backed militia shooting at protesters. The people of Iran want their country back. Please pray for the people of Iraq. There seems to be a media blackout. Here's a video of what happens in Iraq that our media is not covering, and that's from Ayn. Ayn, thank you for writing to us about this tragedy. Now, here's the video that you sent us. It shows protesters being shot at by snipers atop buildings in Baghdad. The protesters are trying to take cover as best they can, but one man is not responding after being shot in the head by a sniper. More than 260 Iraqis have been killed in demonstrations since the start uh, of October. 13 
people in the last two days. Iraqi authorities have also been blocking the Internet during those protests. Now, only 300,000 Christians are still in Iraq from a peak of 1.8 million back in the year 2000. They've been driven out by conflict and insecurity. But sometimes citizens of heaven will be required to disobey their earthly governments and rules of law when they are in contrary to Scripture. Matthew 5:10 though, says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, visit TrueNews.com and use the True News app on your smartphone to submit your own need for prayer. And be sure to visit TrueNews.com for more about our headlines. Yeah, and do us a favor. Please like and share this edition of True News Headlines on your social media channels. Also, please visit TrueNews.com to find out how you can support our news efforts. Hey, we wanted to remind you we're back on YouTube today for uh, those of you that follow us uh, on that particular social media channel. But I want to encourage you that you can always watch our content on TrueNews.com. You never have to worry about missing it again. And we've got a lot of messages, emails, and phone calls from uh, people around the country and outside the U.S. asking, hey, were you guys, are you guys off of YouTube permanently? No, we're back on today. And so you'll see headlines on there. You'll see the Godcast on there if YouTube doesn't ban us again yes. today. So, uh, but we're back on there. And so we've had our time out in the corner, so we're back. Uh, but we want to encourage you that you can always catch our content on truenews.com, so always visit us there. And check out the updated website. We've got some new features on there uh, on the uh, truenews.com website that we'd like for you to check out as well. Well, thank you for joining us for True News Headlines, and stay tuned for our True News Godcast coming up later this evening. Are we in the last days of free speech in America? Are you truly allowed to speak out on your personal, political, or religious beliefs in this nation? Is the First Amendment a thing of the past? Today on the Godcast, we'll be providing examples of how our rights to say what we want to say are being slowly drained away. Stay tuned. Rook will be talking about it later this evening. On behalf of Kerry Kinsey and the entire True News team, I'm Doc Burkhart for True News Headlines. God bless you. God bless you.